Today on the race to March Madness, we're fueling up with full throttle freshman K-State's Michael Beasley giving the Wildcats sharp claws in the Big 12. I just love jumping on somebody's back and snatching the ball. It'll give me a rush sometimes. Eric Gordon helping the Hoosiers bring the heat in the Big Ten. You just got to be focused. Uh, that's, the, that's the main thing. And just worry about the game plan that coaches give you. Plus, ESPN analyst Doug Gottlieb talks about who's on course for San Antonio and who might be looking at the tournament in their rearview mirror. The race to March Madness. Gentlemen, start your engine. race to March Madness. Passenger side today, we got Tom Brennan and our backseat driver, Monday morning quarterback, whatever we want to call you, ESPN analyst Doug Gottlieb. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about the nation's top freshmen as they dot the college basketball landscape. But the landscape itself, guys, has changed quite a bit as we look at the top 25 here. Memphis, the one constant, they are number one for the third straight week. Kansas dropping to number five with the loss to Gay State. Uh, Stanford, Wisconsin, Texas A&M bumping up five spots. The biggest drop was Washington State. They're from 9 to 17. And uh, we talked a little bit last week, Mr. Brennan, about the Mississippi schools. Ole Miss and Mississippi State are both out this week. So let's go back to the Big 12 and talk about how the Kansas K-State game sort of shook things up in the conference. Well, first of all, Bonnie, let me say that the top 25 is a house of cards. You know, Kansas loses at Kansas State and they drop four or five spots. It really doesn't make any sense, but it all gets ironed out at the end. We do it the right way in college basketball. As far as the Big 12, four teams in the top 25, Kansas being the best of those. Kansas State has come on with Beasley and company and uh, two Texas teams, Texas and A&M. And of course, as you mentioned, Texas A&M, after that five overtime loss to Baylor, has bounced back. And as Don Henley says, the wolf is always at the door. Kansas uh, loses at Kansas State. State turns around, goes to Missouri. They get beat there. So business as usual. Pac-10, you wrote an article, Doug, at the beginning of January, and you said UCLA, Washington State were the front runners. You weren't so sure about Stanford. What have they done to get themselves uh, up in the top ten? Well, I think their point guard play is better than expected. Mitch Johnson was a guy a lot of people had question marks about, myself included, after the uh, the dramatic loss, I mean, really a blowout loss to Louisville in the NCAA tournament. I still think matchup-wise, they come upon a team that's going to full-court pressure them, they'll be in trouble. But inside, when you have Brooke and Robin Lopez, especially Brooke, the, the sophomore stud, they're twins, seven-footer, when you have that type of dynamic presence, and the thing I think Stanford's doing better than any team with bigs across the country is they're forcing you offensively to put the ball in the deck and drive towards their big players. They're actually using their strength as their strength defensively. Trent Johnson's doing an amazing job, and Stanford, with their wins at Washington, Washington State, put them in clear contention, probably not to win this league, but definitely be the second best team and get a very good seed in the NCAA tournament. And Brooke, Brooke Lopez, since he came off that nine-game academic suspension, has led the team in points and in rebounds. Big East, uh, it, talk about a huge jump ball outside of Georgetown. How do you make heads or tails of this conference? Uh, you can. And Georgetown, I don't think, is that good. They have not dominated anybody. Notre Dame is coming on. And uh, also UConn. I like UConn making a move. You know, Georgetown was at the same spot last year before they really started to crank it up. So maybe this is the point where John Thompson III has that magical mix. But I think Luke Heron Goody and A.J. Price, two guys in their second year of playing college basketball. Price listed as a junior. Remember, didn't play for two years. His leadership is what's allowed UConn to make this run, this surge, in the middle of the season. And for as much as UConn surging, Villanova is in serious hot water. Well, let's talk a little bit about freshmen here. As Michael Beasley is, uh, as our colleague Dickie V likes to say, one of the great diaper dandies this year in college hoops. But what does K-State's super frosh like doing more than putting the ball in the hoop? And Eric Gordon, the Indiana freshman, doesn't say too much off the court, but his skills do all the talking on it. The Race to March Madness continues right after this. Race to March Madness is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Welcome 
Welcome back to the race to March Madness. When Kansas State knocked Kansas off its undefeated perch at the end of January, freshman Michael Beasley led the way for the Wildcats with 25 points. Now, that in and of itself wasn't really a shocker considering Beasley's been a double-double beast most of the season. What was really impressive was that the 6'10 forward was 4 for 4 that day from beyond the arc. And it wasn't a fluke. How many big men can say that? Well, there's very little Beasley can't do, which is precisely why he's a front runner for Player of the Year. I like being the, the go-to guy. I like being the guy everybody wants to challenge. Uh, I like being the guy that everybody wants to knock off. The approach I take to the game is I'm, I'm, I'm the best on the court. And if you want to be the best, you got to be the best, and you can't beat me. He comes in here every day, and, and he prepares to get better. He cares about one thing and one thing only, and that's our team winning. He's not concerned with anything else. He's not concerned with his numbers. He's not concerned with what people think. He's concerned with, with us as a basketball team getting better and winning. One big three letter word on the top of my goal list, and that's a win. The Wildcats have ended the streak. They're rushing the floor, and it's over. Kansas State has upended Kansas 84 75. Winning is tremendous, you know, it's the best feeling in the world. A guy his size that can put it on the floor, shoot it, use either hand, you know, that's what you get. He's a, he's a guy that wants to get every rebound, you know, and he's not selfish. I would rather be on a team averaging six points a game with consecutive championships than averaging 50 and no wins. Beasley with a monster dunk, and he's got 30. Michael Beasley, freaking nature. Like, he do stuff that a regular big man can't, can't do. Like, he can shift the ball like a guard if somebody goes and try to block his shot, and he got a sweet jump shot. And he can pass, too. That's what people don't know about him. Mike's best thing he does is he rebounds the basketball. He's an unbelievable rebounder. He's got strength, he's big, he's got great hands, and he's got an unbelievable ability to be able to find the ball as it comes off the rim and then go get it. Um, you know, and he does that every time. He doesn't just rebound every once in a while. He rebounds all the time. I just love jumping on somebody's back and snatching the ball. Like, it, it just it gives me a rush sometimes, you know? Just, just, just jumping high as you can, just snatching the ball from three or four defenders, you know, that's, that's cool to me. <laughs> I just don't think about the NBA right now. I'm, I dream about it, you know, it's, it's still a dream, it's still a fantasy. He is a man amongst the boys. I just take it day by day, especially in, in the course of a season. You know, we, we're trying to win games. We want championships. We want we want big wins like that. And I, I would be wrong to, to already place myself on another team to get there someday. But in the near future, I, I just don't see it. Take it to the hole. Oh, a sneak move. That might sound like a vanilla kind of answer, but it's the truth. He's interested in continuing to get better. And anybody that asks him, he'll tell you. He goes, hey, I just want to be an 18-year-old kid right now. You know what I love? I love Beasley's passion for rebounding because you so you so rarely hear that. He leads the nation on the boards, top five in scoring, and it really is conceivable that he could follow in the footsteps uh, of his former AAU teammate, Kevin Durant, who was player of the year last year as a freshman for Texas, went number two to the Sonics. Do you think it's fair to compare those two players? Oh, I think you certainly can compare them, Bonnie. The fact is, each was the best player in the country as a freshman, which is really impressive. And I think the thing about Beasley that gives him a little bit of an edge, in my mind, over Durant, is that he's such an awesome rebounder. Scores are, scores are born. Rebounders are made. you got to want it. you got to go get it. And uh, that's what really is impressive about, uh, about Beasley as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a little unfair because they, they honestly don't play the same position. I mean, Kevin Durant is maybe a better version eventually of Tracy McGrady, whereas when you watch my 
Michael Beasley play, he's a newer and I think better version of a Derek Coleman. I think he's actually a better defensive player than Derek Coleman ever was. It's not really saying that much. <laughs> uh, but the inside scoring, the ability to step out, hit the perimeter three, I think just based upon position that they play, it's difficult to compare stats because their styles and their positions are so very different. For as much as we talk about Beasley, the guy who sort of flies under the radar on this team is the other freshman forward, Billy Walker. Between those two, Tom, you know, Frank Martin was hired, first-time head coach. Nobody really knew what was going to happen. How did those two players really help keep K-State on the map? Well, they, they did it by the, with their tremendous ability. What Frank Martin did, Bonnie, what I think was tremendous, he never got shook. They lost to Notre Dame early, they lost to George Mason. He kept his composure, got his ship righted, and uh, that's a mark of a good coach. He also moved Billy Walker to the power forward position. Walker wants to be a three for the NBA, but he's a four right now in college. I think that's changed their team forever. They beat Kansas at home for the first time in 25 years. That'll solidify you in your first-time head coach. You beat a team for the first time as your in-state rival in a quarter century. Amazing stuff at K-State. It would have solidified them more if they could have won the game after the Kansas that's Fair point. But that's a story for a different day. <laughs> All right, well, ESPN is dishing out some great Big East hoops action tonight. Roy Hibbert of the Georgetown Hoy is heading to Louisville as part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. Saturday prime time presented by DirecTV, 9 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Race to March Madness trivia for this week in the spirit of the undefeated New England Patriots. Oh, wait, the Giants won the Super Bowl. Anyway, what was the last NCAA Division I men's basketball team to go undefeated in the regular season and the postseason? The answer may have you seeing red. Hint, hint. The answer to this week's trivia question is in honor of the now-retired Bob Knight. In 1976, Knight's Indiana Hoosier squad was the last school to go undefeated 32-0 with a win over Michigan in the national title game. When Knight stepped down from Texas Tech Monday, he left the game with 902 career victories and three national titles at Indiana. Well, in an ideal world, Indiana's Mr. Basketball would always wind up playing college ball at IU, right? Okay, so maybe Greg Oden and Sean May didn't get that memo. And Eric Gordon actually originally committed to Illinois. But when Mike Davis stepped down from Indiana and Kelvin Sampson stepped in, Gordon stepped back to reconsider. And now he's stepping up for the team. Gordon always watches a kid growing up in Indianapolis. My name is Eric Gordon from Indiana University. Eric Gordon is five out of five from three-point land. Eric came into college basketball with everything you would want from a shooting guard, and he's showing it to you. Eric Gordon fires a three. Yes! This is a flat out score. You know, uh, great defender. Just a flat out score, you know, just flat out with the ball in the bucket. One of the best shooters I ever saw. I mean, no conscience when he shoot and drives super hard, and he's a great athlete. Eric Gordon with his 24th point of the ball game. A lot of players sometimes will fool you in practice situations and that sort of thing into thinking they're unselfish. But Eric came in looking like an unselfish player, and that's exactly who he's been for the Hoosiers. Eric Gordon's humble, he's modest, he has an unbelievable mother and father. He's very well grounded. He doesn't have a lot of highs and lows in his life. He's been a dream for us to coach, but he's also a great teammate. Just being on the floor with him you know, is very special. I think me and him feed off each other well. You know, as the years going on, we've gotten better as a good combination, you know, playing off of each other. We're a real talented team. We got DJ, senior, who makes double doubles basically almost every game. To tell you the truth, it's kind of scary to see how good we play. I think I make the game easier for him, you know, where teams can concentrate on him, and he makes it easier for me where, you know, teams can double and triple team me like they could in the previous year. So, you know, he's been great for this team. Indiana is just full of history. Growing up watching them play and to finally be on the court playing and represent IU, and I mean, it, just, it, was, it was just a great feeling. I think the great thing about Indiana uh, University is uh, tradition of the coaches, the fans, the players. You, know, you just feel very fortunate to have the opportunity. One thing we talked to our team about is doing the best you can. You know, if you, if you spend your life trying to be what other people want you to be, I think you're missing a great opportunity to be the best you can be. You just got to be focused. Uh, that's, the, that's the main thing. And just worry about the game plan that coaches give you. You're just playing a basketball game and you just play the hardest. 
The only thing I've been worried about is trying to win a Big Ten title in the NCAA championship. I've seen a lot of good guards. I mean, really good guards. They have great quickness. And I've seen some that just bull rush it. They have great power. But I've yet to see one that combines his combination of power and athleticism. He's obviously the best player that I've coached. Gordon is the Big Ten's leading scorer. His talent, his well-roundedness is really indisputable. But look at D.J. White. Here's a senior leader who averages a double-double every game. If you had to pick one player that you credit more for IU's success this year, who would it be? Well, it would, for me, it would be Gordon because D.J. White was there last year, and they weren't anything like they are now. And I think the fact that they make each other better, there's no doubt about that. But Gordon makes D.J. White more better. More better. Yes. I guess I could say that, that, that one. You, you know, a guy who quotes Henry David Thoreau going with more better. I would agree with him, though, Gordon, because what he does is he takes not only his own defender, but an additional defender. When he's coming off screens, you have to constantly know where he is, and he'll stretch a defense to 25 feet where he shoots with relative comfort. I also point out I was there when he officially committed to Indiana. It forever changed Kelvin Sampson's tenure. Now it made it cool to come back to IU. I think he has made this program relevant once again. Well, when Davis resigned in 2006, this, is, this was a program that was on really shaky ground. What about Kelvin Sampson's head coaching experience has enabled him to get the Hoosiers back on track? Well, he was a star. He's a star, a star coach. But the fact is, is that King Knight never anointed Davis when he left, and Davis never had a chance. He was done from the get-go. I think the big thing is, a lot like Ben Howland at UCLA, when you're resurrecting a program, you have to do it starting with defects. The personnel wasn't necessarily in place when he took over, so you start defensively, then you add in a star player like an Eric Gordon, and then you allow the team to play freer offensively in year two and year three. Well, whether it's been Montana Tech or Washington State or Oklahoma, Calvin Sampson's had head coaching success at every turn. Before he ever arrived in Bloomington two years ago, he engineered eight straight 20-win seasons with the Sooners, including a Final Four berth in 2002. So, Sampson's coaching has been consistent, and so, too, has his wardrobe. Coincidence? We'll let you decide. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Sturger, coming to you from the heartland of college hoops, Bloomington, Indiana, home of the Hoosiers. But before we get started today, why don't I slip into something a little bit more comfortable? Wow, that was fast. So now that I'm just appropriately, why don't we find out what Hoosier Nation has to offer? So, Coach, how did this whole fad get started? Strictly superstition. I've been wearing a blue shirt and a red tie since 1995. We've been doing pretty good, so I'm not about to change clothes now. So the, the kids that invented this look, they're called the Samsonites? What, what is that about? I think it's just um, just a play on the last name Samson. It's flattering a little bit that you got, you know, hundreds of kids rocking no, your we, we, shirt. We have around 8,000 students to come to every single home game. We have the best fans in America. I cannot believe all the people here. In fact, check out one of the biggest IU fans of all, John Mellencamp. So I'm here with DJ White and Eric Gordon. and. Guys, I gotta ask you, what do you think of my shirt? Same it looks shirt. a little bit different, right, than it does on coach? A little bit. It's the same shirt and tie he wears every game. I guess this is good luck to him. You don't mind that he rocks the same thing every game? As long as we keep winning. Drama is back on Thursdays. Lost, the show on everyone's top ten list, begins its best season yet. An all-new Lost, Thursday at 9, 8 central on ABC. And when we come back, we'll duke it out over this year's diaper dandies. Why are freshmen dominating the college game? Who's the most ready for the next level? Who would benefit most by sticking around in school? We'll go full court press on the Race to March Madness after this timeout. Race to March Madness is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Dre, where are you going right now? Nope. Nope. Stay down, Jordan. Stay down. 
There you go. Good, good. That's it. No threes in transition. If we can talk and identify who the open guy is and match up with him, then we're 90% home. There you go. There you go. Cut, cut. Guard him, guard him, guard him. Screen right, on my screen right, screen right. This is damn good basketball. Good basketball. Thanks so much to Calvin Sampson for letting us mic him up to get an inside look at Indiana's practice. Those things are always fun. Eric Gordon for the Hoosiers, one of this long list of freshmen. Why is it that this crop of freshmen has been so on the radar this year? It's inexplicable to me, Bonnie. I really think it's an aberration. Uh, freshmen have been eligible for 30 years, but this is by far the greatest class ever. All right, let me give you a theory. Okay? So, remember the perfect storm, the movie The Perfect Storm? Yeah. And they showed the radar map, and you had the high pressure here, the low pressure, and then something coming off the shore, and then you had this perfect storm in the middle. Well, if you look at the senior class in college basketball, it's supposed to have Dwight Howard, Josh Smith, J.R. Smith, Al Jefferson, eight high school seniors went straight to the pros. And then since the rule has changed, it's allowed college players to make that jump who may not have been drafted otherwise because the classes were a little bit weak. Combine that with this immensely talented freshman class who get opportunities to play right away that you didn't get 20 years ago, and there you have it, boom, perfect storm. That's why you've had that immediate impact. It's almost this theory of instant gratification. What can you do for me now? Because chances are you ain't going to be around next year anyway. Indeed. All right, time for full core press. Which freshman is most prepared for the NBA right now? Hands down, Kevin Love. Complete player, ready to jump. Complete player, but maybe not the athlete of a Michael Beasley, who's also a complete player, does it offensively, inside, outside block shots. I think Beasley, he'll be the number one overall pick. All right, final question. On the flip side, which freshman would benefit most from sticking around in school another year? O.J. needs to stay. O.J. Mayo with Southern Cal. He'll be the first guy Why? at the door when they sign up. He needs to make his teammates better. Move the ball a little bit, pass it a little more. I think Blake Griffin. He's really close with his brother Taylor. Uh, Taylor will be a senior next year. Willie Warren, a stud from Texas coming in. They have a chance to be special at Oklahoma. Blake Griffin stays around. Oklahoma chance for a Final Four. He has a chance to be a top five pick. All right, we're going to switch gears, go from the youngsters to the not quite as young. We want to congratulate Eddie Sutton for finally getting career win number 800. San Francisco beating Pepperdine. You had a chance to play for him, Doug, at Oklahoma State. You had a chance to talk to him? Yeah, I did. And uh, they fell down 19 points. Behind 19 points at Pepperdine before he got his 800th win. I said, Coach, what was the difference? What changed? He said, I brought him in and gave him one of my classic do-better talks. And you know what? <laughs> it worked. They went out and defended and played. Congratulations to Coach on his 800th win. He gave it 800 times, that talk. Well, you know, better late than never. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this week's edition of the Race to March Madness. Coming up next Saturday, we're going to head to Memphis to check out yet another super freshman, Derek Rose, and Xavier, one of the hottest teams this year, the A-10. But, ha-ha, have the X-Men benefited from a little divine intervention? That and a whole lot more on the Race to March Madness next Saturday at 3 p.m. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.